For a long time now, I have spent a lot of time reflecting on time. The title of my PhD dissertation, which I completed in 2005, was A Comparative Study of the Symbolism of Time and Embodiment in the Theologies of St. Augustine and Ramanuja. Last year, I published the first novel in a trilogy I'm working on. This novel is titled The Harvest of Time. Last month, I published a short story with the title The Clockmaker of Calcutta. So, time and again, I keep on returning to the question, what is time? What fascinates me about time is its sheer elusiveness. We breathe time, we inhabit time, we live in time, we live with time. And yet we seem not to know how to answer that seemingly simple question. Many years ago, I read somewhere that nostalgia is possible because although we can return to the same place, we cannot return to the same place in the same time. The past is not some strange country we have never visited. The past is flowing past us in the here and now, if only we can become aware of this flow. In my research on Hindu thinkers and social activists, in the time frame of 1800 and 1950, I often see how they are creatively reworking ideas and institutions they once inherited from pre-modern centuries. It may be the case that in our childhood, we are more fond of our uncles and aunts than our parents. Why is this so? Perhaps this is because our uncles and aunts, who are relatively younger and have relatively fewer social engagements, have more of their being to give us. Likewise, our grandparents may have retired from the turbulent battlefields of the world, and they too tend to have a lot of their being to give us. Do note the phrase I'm using, their being to give us. People sometimes say to me, thank you for your time. I find this phrase somewhat odd, for it implies that time can be quantified into units that can be transferred between people. Certainly, I never heard it during my years of growing up in India. I subliminally rephrase it as, thank you for your being. To speak poetically, time is the stage on which being becomes manifested. We need time, sometimes a lot of time, to become what we are or to become what we seek to become. To offer an existential hypothesis, the more time you have, the more generous you may become. Thus our childhood attachment to aunts, uncles, and grandparents. And to speak theologically, this is why the one who owns time is the one who embodies maximal being and thus maximal generosity. <laughs>